What is up everyone? Welcome to All That. Today we have a little bit of a sit down and chit chat for this month's Haunted Audible Book Club, which really, honestly, we didn't even need to do a poll for. If this is your first time here, every single month at the end of the month, there is a poll that goes in the community tab here on my YouTube channel, and then also my stories on Instagram, where we decide between three different books to listen to and or read. I say listen or read because I like to listen to it in Audible book form, that way I can crochet along as I'm listening to it. Of course, I have pumpkin spice latte today. Yes, pumpkin spice awesomeness in my Sally mug. If that gives you any indication of what we're going to be listening to this month, Long Live the Pumpkin Queen by Shay Earnshaw. 95%. That's what it won by. And it totally makes sense why. It is the long awaited sequel to The Nightmare Before Christmas. It's the tale of what happened after the credits start rolling at the movie. I know this is kind of an unpopular opinion, but Every time that I've watched The Nightmare Before Christmas, I never immediately thought, oh, Jack and Sally gets married. Like that was not my immediate thought. I don't know why, but I just was like, okay, they pretty much just met each other, right? Like that's what happened. Marriage did not jump into my head right away, but that's what the book is. After The Nightmare Before Christmas movie, they met on the spiral hill, clasped hands and said, we're meant to be, that's it. Let's do it, let's get married. And that's where this book starts. The cool thing about this book is that it's from Sally's perspective, which is really interesting because it's a fun character that we didn't get to know a ton about in the movie. We knew she was created in Halloween Town, that she wanted to go outside and do things, but I was just locked away by the doctor. But really that's kind of where it stopped. So I think it'll be interesting to learn a little bit more about the character and Halloween Town in general. I'm sure there's gonna be a lot of other fun things here. I really don't know the direction that this is gonna go. Honestly, I just read the back and it says the nightmare didn't end after Christmas. All right, nice and ominous. So we've got that. I do have two copies of this now. I have the actual book version and then I have the audible book version too. That one is the one that I'm gonna be listening to every single Sunday so I can crochet. I don't know, I have a couple of projects I need to actually pick which one I'm gonna be working on this month. I have three to choose from, so I need to narrow that down. But this was just a hundred percent a collector's item. I needed this in the yarn dungeon and it's one of those that I'm sure I will end up reading every single October. It's just gonna be like that. So I wanted a copy. Now I know a lot of you ghouls have already grabbed your copy and a lot of you were super smart and did the actual pre-order to it. For whatever reason, kept going back and forth over if I actually wanted the book version. Cause to be honest, my library is all in Audible. That's how I listen to a majority of my books. I was just going back and forth and back and forth for an entire month. It was kind of ridiculous. I don't even know what or why I was thinking that way. Fast forward to August 1st, I decide that evening, yes, absolutely, I want a copy. Okay, I'm just gonna go to my local bookstore in the morning and snag it. I bet you can guess how that went. Not well. I had to go a couple of different bookstores. They were sold out and the place that I actually found this copy, there was only two other copies. So three books. That's it, that's all they had in stock and they weren't getting any more in stock until the 9th of August, which, so I still will not even have my copy right now. <sighs> Long story short, I was just really glad that I actually found a copy and could come home with it that day. If you don't have a copy yet though, just kind of use that as word of caution. <laughs> you wanna go to an actual bookstore, make sure you check online on their store, like that particular store, and see that they have it in stock. Just double check, it'll save you time anyways. The book in total is actually rather short. It's six hours and 28 minutes, audible book, listening time, that's how long it is. Everybody reads at a different pace, so I can't really tell you how long it'll take if you want to sit down and actually read it this way, which many of us will probably get that done before the month is up, which leads us into our podcast choice of the month. This one in particular has two seasons out already. Wherever you get your podcast, you can find it there. Again, I go through audibles. We are gonna be listening to Mockery Manor, which is all about a haunted amusement park. Just the colors alone, it gives total end of summerween spooky vibes and a haunted amusement park. I feel like those two concepts go together really, really well, but I thought this would be a fun one to kind of wrap it up. Even though summerween in July is officially over, it's still warm where I'm at. I'm sure a lot of you ghouls as well. When it comes to spookiness level for both of these, the book in particular, I would say one out of five 
that. If you've seen Nightmare Before Christmas, I feel like it's gonna be in that same range where it's just a lot of Halloween fun. And spookiness is like, there's a spider and there's skeletons and there's creepy pumpkins, but nothing super intense. Definitely would not categorize this as horror in any way, shape or form. For the podcast, I would say more of a two to three out of five bats, just for the fact that it's a little bit more of an intense thriller. But again, this is a Haunted Audible book club. So things that we listen to and read are definitely gonna be spooky. It's gonna be a range of spooky though. So definitely know yourself and your level. Pull up the book, pull up the podcast, read the actual synopsis for both of them and see if it's gonna be something that you're interested in. As far as project goes, I'm not sure if I'm gonna be working on this as I read this book, but it's Nightmare Before Christmas, so I at least need to mention this. I'm gonna continue this month to work my way through the Nightmare Before Christmas crochet kit. There are 12 different patterns in here. Goals are to have this done by the 1st of October. There are 11 different characters in here to make and also a wall hanging, which I'm deciding to do the wall hanging last, just as kind of like a grand finale. I don't make plushies that often, so I kind of want to move through all of those first. I've made wall hangings quite a bit, and this one doesn't have that many colors, so there's not a lot of color change in it. I feel like it's just gonna be a nice ending anyways. That's how I'm going about this. If you have yet to hear about this, it is a crochet kit, like I said. It comes with this amazing book with the instructions, as well as what yarn to use, what hook to use, all the things that you need to know in order to make these. I have my one tagged here that I'm working on right this second. I found mine at Barnes and Nobles. This was just another random day that I was there, and it was a great day. Like I had no idea it was there, had no idea it was out, so it was a really, really fun find. I've already made Sally, actually, which is perfect because we're listening to Sally's book this month. Okay, how perfect. I'm really glad that I did her first now. The ones that I have on my hook at this moment are Oogie Boogie and Jack, and I am so glad that I did Sally first because this patchwork was, it was a lot. For someone that does not do stuffies or plushies or dolls often, there was a lot of moving parts. I'm so glad that I did. Like I had a ton of fun. Her head is a little bit leaning, but that's okay. <laughs> there is like a, a little wire that is in her neck and I think it's just like bent. There we go, better? I mean, Sally's head's kind of tilted most of the, it is, yeah, okay, yeah. It's fine, it's tilted, just like the one way. We're good, we're good. So I'm gonna work, continue to work my way through that. If you have not snagged it and you're interested in it, please go take a look at it sooner rather than later. Again, this is totally gonna be a collector's item. So even people that don't crochet are definitely gonna snag this up. And the closer we get to October, I kind of have a feeling that it's gonna be sold out. It does come with the yarn and tools that are needed in order to make Jack and Sally. But after that, for the rest of the characters, they give you suggestions for yarn. And the yarn that they use is paint box. So if you know that yarn and you love it already, you're good to go. But really, I feel like you could use any type of yarn that works well, like cotton yarn for stuffies. The only thing that's nice is they do have the names of each color. Since every character is so iconic, you wanna make sure you get the colors right. So even if you use a different brand for the yarn, I would at least go onto that site, pull up all the names to kind of compare the colors and know what you're looking for. If you're obsessed with Nightmare Before Christmas though, you know the colors, you know which character is supposed to have what. I feel like you'd totally be fine. One of the yarn that I did get that wasn't recommended but I 100% had to use is the Lion Brands DIY Glow Yarn. I got this for a couple of characters. First off is Oogie Boogie. I just felt like that character had to glow. The original one or the book is showing brown, like the color that it is in the actual movie, but I love it when they turn on the UV lights in Oogie Boogie's lair and he totally glows. That's what I wanted my character to be. This actually is out at Joann's right this second. They have it in stores and online, which I haven't seen that before. So if you've been interested in this yarn, I definitely go check it out. I will say it is 50 grams per skein and it's almost $8 per skein, which is a little bit steep, but for the characters that I'm using it for, oh yeah, I'm going to do this one and I'm 
gonna do zero as well. I know that zero's whole body doesn't glow, but I just felt, I don't know, I wanted to. So that's what I'm gonna be using it for. I ended up grabbing three just to be on the safe side, but I really don't think I'm gonna need to use all of those. I'm just throwing it out there as a suggestion in case you were interested in this yarn. I've used it up the past couple of Halloweens, but again, once we get to October, it's nowhere to be found and including online. It always sells out online. So the fact that it's in Joann's, in stores, and online, and online brand site, might as well check it out now. As for the project that I'm gonna be working on this month, normally I like to set aside one to two hours every single Sunday to listen to the book and work on a just a fun for me type of project. It depends on how long our read is and if I like it so much that I don't wanna set it down and I feel like that's gonna be this one. I feel like I'm gonna get it done way sooner than the end of the month. But regardless, I still set aside the time every single Sunday. I have quite a few projects still that I need to work up for my Coraline projects. This year's theme for the Yarn Dungeon is based off of the movie Coraline. And I've done so many cool crochet projects that makers have already designed. I'm kind of just working my way through those. Some will be plushies that I can put on shelving. Others are wearables. Some are blankets. Like there's just a lot of them. At this point, I had to narrow it down to the specific ones that I'm like, okay, I have to get this done. Which ones would I be really, really sad if I did not get them finished by October 1st? And this one is like right on the top. I'm gonna be working up some cocoa beetles. If you see the movie Coraline, you know exactly what I'm talking about. The other mother is chilling in kind of her, almost like a waiting room and offers Coraline a box of cocoa beetles. And they're all like wiggly moving. I gotta pull the picture up here. I have a huge file of just Coraline projects right now. It's kind of crazy. This pattern is by the artist Morbidly Made, and there is one other pattern that is Coraline based as well that I've already purchased. I need to at least have nine done. I actually wanna make a box to put them in. They're turning out a little bit bigger than I was expecting, so this box is gonna be like one of those jumbo chocolate boxes that they have available during Valentine's season. I have one that's not totally finished, but this is just the body of it. Yeah. It is huge. Right now it kind of just looks like a potato. <laughs> Obviously legs, wings need to go on. I do have the wings. Let's put those on. That actually might help it a little bit. There we go. So I'm gonna assemble all of these. I have pretty much the body done for all nine, but I need to assemble them. And that's really what is taking the longest, which has nothing to do pattern wise. Like that's just, for me anyways, that's always the longest part when it comes to stuffies, is sitting down and actually sewing everything together. So I have just a bowl full of little insect legs right now. It kind of brings me a lot of joy actually. If you're interested in making these along with me on Sundays, definitely check out Morbidly Made. There are quite a few other amazing patterns on there as well. Like I said, there's one other Coraline one, which is the squid. And I have purchased that and I do plan on making that. If I power through all nine of these this month and I still have time, I will definitely do the little mini squid too. Can you guess what we are gonna watch for our Stitch and Scream this month? It like, do I even need to announce it? Are we just kind of understanding that it's Nightmare Before Christmas theme this month? That's what we're gonna be watching this month, Nightmare Before Christmas. That will be happening. Let me let me make sure I say it the right date, August 19th, and it'll be happening here on my channel when I normally go live, which is 7 p.m. Central. It's a Friday. If you've never been to a Stitch and Scream before, what happens is you come and join the live. I'll have a little timer in the background and it'll say exactly where we are in the movie. So if you don't come right away or you come in the middle or you leave early, you know where it's at. So that way you can snag your own copy of The Nightmare Before Christmas, have that on, crochet and chit chat with the rest of the ghoul squad. If you have never seen The Nightmare Before Christmas, please make this your time. I don't know, are there any ghouls who haven't seen The Nightmare Before Christmas? If you haven't, let me know, please let me know. I would love to see you there for the Stitch and Scream and it would be super fun because it would just be a cool experience to chit chat with everyone about what they're making, what they're working on, maybe Nightmare Before Christmas projects that you've crocheted in the past or you're crocheting right that second. It's just a day to get together and an excuse to watch a spooky movie together and crochet at the same time. All right, ghouls, I think that's pretty much it for the beginning of this month or happenings of this month. I hope that you're seriously so excited for this month's Haunted Audible read. Long live the pumpkin queen. I mean, 
nightmare before Christmas. I don't really know what else to say. I just genuinely have such high hopes for this. So I hope that it's awesome. Oh yes, there is a book recap as well, which happens the last Sunday of the month, which the date is Sunday, August 28th at 7 p.m. Central, live on my channel. We'll get together, meet, chit chat, all about what we thought of this entire book. We also chat about crochet and coffee and everything. It's open-ended, but we definitely do discuss the book for a little bit anyways. If we love it, however, we might have a lot to talk about. But for today, that is it. So thank you for hanging out with me here at the Yarn Dungeon. Have a fantastically spooky rest of your day, and I will see you in my next video.